So I wanted to do an update about Luke. Um, <clears throat> last I mentioned was he was put on 60 milligrams of prednisone, which is a steroid medication. And one of the side effects is an appetite stimulant. And there's three pills um, every 12 hours. And he was doing really great with it. He was eating really good. Um, he was like back to his old self. And then he developed a skin infection and got these large boils all over his abdomen. Like maybe 40 plus. And <clears throat> they had like yellow pustules on there. Uh, the vet didn't think that the prednisone was what was causing it. But because of my medical history, even though I don't have, I haven't worked with animals, I decided to be on the safe side and discontinue giving him that medication because <clears throat> that was one additional thing he had to deal with was these painful boils in addition to everything else. So as soon as I stopped giving it to him, they cleared right up and then the vet gave us a prescription for Entice which is a liquid oral medication that comes in a syringe and there's only four doses and you give it to him once a day usually in the morning time and <clears throat> it wasn't really working for him and we had had another vet appointment for him but um, he just wasn't doing very good he was declining very rapidly and so we had made like a like an emergency vet visit kind of and um, we decided as a family that he you know he wasn't doing well um, he wasn't enjoying any of the things that he enjoyed before he wasn't eating he hadn't eaten in several days and he had dropped about 14 pounds um, and so we decided that you know it was best to, you know, put him out of his misery because we weren't going to do chemotherapy treatment and we had pretty much hit a brick wall and he was letting us know that he was ready. Even though animals can't communicate, they have other ways of communicating and he wasn't, you know, Playing with his toys. He had a hard time getting even in bed because he sleeps with us and um, he couldn't even get in bed. He was having a hard time getting up and down the stairs, wasn't interested in really a whole lot. <clears throat> so um, that was like pretty much worst case scenario for me because I know he did not like being at the vet. So I was concerned that he, it would be a stressful process for him and I didn't want him to go out like that. But there was four people there and plus Maddie was there. And prior to making the appointment, we knew that that would be his last doctor's appointment. And so we had asked them permission if Maddie could be there because they're pretty close. Maddie's our other dog. They're pretty close, and um, they said yeah, because, you know, like, we're leaving with Luke, and then he never comes back, and as close as they are, we thought it would be best. And um, having all those people in the room, plus the vet and the vet tech, and Maddie, he was not stressed at all, not even a little bit. He, like, he, like, plopped down and and sprawled out and um, he was using my leg as a pillow and Maddie was there all wiggle butt and we had, you know, including me, four family members, so he wasn't stressed out at all and we couldn't have asked for a better vet. She had really awesome energy and it wasn't a traumatic experience at all. Um, he wasn't stressed out at all. Um, when First, they give the sedative first, and then, so she gave the sedative, and that kind of stung a little bit, but from his reaction, it kind of stung a little bit, but then she left the room, and we <clears throat> were petting him and talking to him and everything, and he was fine, and then, um, 
he fell asleep, and then um, her and the vet tech came back with the with the actual <clears throat> euthanasia medication. So, but yeah, that's animals is only flaws. They don't live long enough. Um, and the lymphoma, luckily, he was in any, in any pain. He was in discomfort. He wasn't, you know, feeling good. He was really tired, and he just... Even though he wasn't eating anything, he kept wanting to eat grass, which that's like a universal dog symbol for, you know, stomach discomfort, digestive discomfort. But, um, yeah, I just wanted to share this with you if you're going through this with your dog or your cat and they've just been diagnosed with lymphoma or possible lymphoma it's not a painful disease he even had a tumor like right here it was like the size of a um, like a hard boiled egg and it wasn't like when you touched it it wasn't it didn't cause him any pain or anything it's just incredibly aggressive and incredibly fast like this has all happened in such a short amount of time, it's stu it's stunning. And so I'm sharing this in hopes that, you know, you're going through this and just know that you're not alone and that the best thing that you could do is just love your animal and listen to their to them when they're trying to tell you what they want. And if you've made the decision to um, fight it and do chemotherapy and everything uh, they have a lot of technological advancements and everything and um, from what I've read it'll buy them another year and maybe even if they're young m could even buy them much longer than a year but um, yeah I just want to make this so that you know you're not alone and you know just give them love and just take it one day at a time and I'm sorry that you have to go through this. Uh, I wouldn't wor I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. And that was pretty much the update.